Welcome, horror fans, and thank you for downloading The Horror Show. Sit back while your hosts, Sean and Joe, take you back in time to review your favorite and not-so-favorite horror movies from yesteryear with their own twisted comedic view Your hosts will remind you why you loved or hated those classic horror movies and other horror-related events. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to The Horror Show. Everybody and welcome to the horror show, the show that dissects, mutilates, dismembers, and butchers all of your favorite and not so favorite horror movies and other horror related events. Other horror related events. I'm Sean. I'm Joe. Joe, <laughs> deep breath. <laughs> yeah, that'll probably come out like crap on this. Joe, yeah, you know what? I'm actually already going to interrupt you. <laughs> At the end of our show each week, we uh, we give our plugs, and mm-hmm. this time I just wanted to say that. Uh, July 18th at the Matrix Convention yes. Center in Danbury, Connecticut. We're going to be at the Connecticut Horror Fest. So if you're going, stop on by. Say yeah. what's up. So you won't know, I know us I'd... from anyone else in the crowd, but actually you might. You might. I'll probably be <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> we'll just be walking around yelling. Yeah, probably. We'll, I'll probably. Ha- we'll have something distinguishing. Just look for the guys. Looking really nervous and trying to talk to celebrities. <laughs> celebrities. <laughs> so, yeah, I use that term very loosely. But, yeah, come on out and check it, check that out because it's going to be aw- – hey, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, Doug Bradley's going to be there. Oh, we, so many good – You probably know from Wrong Turn 5. Uh, <laughs> Grandpa from Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre there. Gunnar Hansen. I refused to – okay, so his picture on the website of the – the comp, the convention yeah. is, of course, just the picture the grandpa. of Grandpa. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I wonder what he looks like in real life. And then I was like, you know what? Not even going to do it. I'm going <laughs> to let that be a surprise. Because imagine if he's just like a 40-year-old yeah, guy. he's a super like young guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was just 18 in the Grandpa <laughs> mask. Like <laughs> That'd be so awesome. <laughs> I know. So I refuse to look at it. So when I see him, I'll either be like laughing or possibly crying depending yeah. on depending on the situation uh mick foley's gonna be there michael yep. jai white who i'm super stoked this is black fucking dynamite spawn spawn yeah yeah he's awesome you know his dad was an actor like a black black exploitation actor and that's that's why he that's started why he doing black those dynamite. extra ones yeah felicia I, rose is gonna be there i think he played his dad in a movie actually felicia rose from sleepaway camp yeah yeah she, she does not have her. a penis but no, and she looks good. She will be there, yeah. <laughs> she does look good. She looks great. And the Flatliners. Yes, Joe's favorite band. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Flatliners. I know. It's, I, I know. But uh, I wanted to say that before because I know a lot of people fast forward at the end. When yes. Just, so. Yes, when it's the end. I know. I was thinking about doing the same thing and I meant to write it down and I failed to do so. If you're in Connecticut or the New York area, stop on Yeah, by. check it out. It's in uh, Danbury, Connecticut. So it's right on the western border of uh, Connecticut. So if you're upstate yeah. New York, you can. it's an easy drive. July 18th. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And uh, come find us. Maybe we'll just follow us on social media and we'll post like one <laughs> photo of our faces just like <laughs> yeah we're being real faces. awkward <laughs> yeah like this is us we'll be standing alone in the corner if you want to come talk to us uh but yeah it'll be fun but joe yes when you th- it's, the movie we're going to talk about today it's made in 1990 yeah when you think about the movies made in 1990 <laughs> you have there's, good fellas right good there's fellas? good felt you got the instant classic good fellas academy award-winning dances with wolves you got 
critically acclaimed Hunt for Red October. It won a couple mm-hmm. small awards, sure, but it was sure. critically acclaimed Pretty Woman, mm-hmm. Home Alone, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yeah. Frankenhooker. <laughs> the best of the lot. The, I mean, I'm pretty sure that was considered like an, an Academy snub, <laughs> right? That was like, that Dude, was one of those. I can't believe it was 1990 that this was made. Joe. It felt like it was like at least 78. <laughs> <laughs> Judging. Well, where did you watch yours? Did you obtain yours through nefarious means? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason I ask is I watched mine through Hulu. Okay. And it must be like the ultra remastered edition. Really, it was crystal clear HD. No, so this isn't my first time seeing it. I did, oh, okay. I did rent it with that awesome VHS box, and but that was actually kind of a funny story that no none of our listeners are going to care about. But the kid I I watched it with, we used to watch horror movies all the time. I saw it for the first time today in like fifteen years. Oh at the really? Gym. I was like, yeah. I should send him a message. I'd be like, dude, I saw you today. We watched Frankenhooker later on, <laughs> but uh. Yeah, um, I forgot what I was saying. First time oh, I saw it. Yeah, no, and we were you were, we were just talking about the quality of it, and you said it looked like it was. Oh, made yours in said yours was remastered. Yeah, yeah so, no. So it looked like a nine, mine 1990 was VHS movie, VHS like rip, rip, rip yeah. yeah. So it, mine looked like I'd say even mid nineties. It was so good, and then and then, <laughs> but I will tell you, looking at the box in Cheshire Video, I would have guessed yeah, like that was like seventy five. Like, yeah. I mean, I even remember the plastic was torn off, yeah. like, and just sitting there, the plastic over the cover. I'm positive that's what he was going for, but <laughs> yeah, 1990. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. That was crazy. So I looked up the budget on IMDb. Did you look that up? You know, I think I saw it, but I didn't. I didn't actively. I seek don't. That. I don't believe it to be true. I think whoever wrote it is lying. What did you write? What did you see? 2.5 million. Oh no, I did not see that. And oh the, my god! The gross was two hundred and five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I read like, and I, th- I I forget if this was this movie. This might have been something else. Actually, it might have been like Basket Case, but it was like thirty eight thousand. I don't think it was this for movie. what gross. No, for, for cost. For cost. Well, Basket Case was eight years prior. Yeah, I think that was Basket Case. I was looking at randomly, but dude. How do you, that's my life. What did you but, spend the two point five million on? cocaine that's well that's funny you say that because i was gonna make the joke later that i'm pretty sure these drugs might be real <laughs> they were hitting crack pipes and later on in this movie that i was like those look like legitimate crack pipes and for a bad about, movie even, even though we haven't even started this movie yet, can we just talk about the size of the crack rock that one of those hookers was trying to fit into that skinny did you notice that it was like the size of a fucking watermelon well, just those, <laughs> those super crack rocks were just so ridiculous to begin with and the way they behaved around the crack oh my god it was amazing this movie was amazing this is like everything i wanted zombievers to be like, yeah yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, it wasn't meant to be taken seriously, but it was more fun to watch. So, and just to go back to Zombievers, I think one of those issues, and I don't know if I talked about this already. I was talking about it with my wife because we, we've been watching some trash TV, some trash reality shows, and they're so fun to watch. They're they're legitimate comedy, and I was like, that's why these shows that try to make fun of dating shows like they had that flame of love or whatever it was called on e and it was just it was a comedy it was a spoof and i was like you don't need a fake comedy when you could watch the real thing and it's three times as funny (laughs) right (laughs) Right. and that's kind of like where zombie beavers fell into like don't do it on purpose just make a bad movie just be like when they come with you to with a million dollars be like no I'll take half of that. <laughs> like, don't worry about it. I'll take half of that. Right. Just we'll, give me as many mannequins as yeah. possible, <laughs> and we're good. And we'll we'll spend the rest on drugs. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> I think that's what I think that's what Hollywood needs is more drugs. <laughs> I think that's definitely what they need. So if you couldn't tell, guys, we're talking about Frankenhooker. Yes. And um, I've never seen it. First time seeing it. What? I'm so happy I watched this. Uh, but we start out with a great distributor logo, a classic. And this is why I also, when I saw it was the 90s, again, I was shocked even though the quality was good. Because that opening logo, Shapiro, Glykenhaus Entertainment, I was like, oh, man, this is like 82. <laughs> like, this isn't even a real company. This is like, yeah, this is a drug front. Like, that guy's just doing coke. <laughs> and like That guy's Scarface. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, that's ridiculous. Um 
but yeah, let's get into this movie. It, it, it was it was awesome. It was, it was awesome. It was, it was awesome. fantastic. It was so good. It's directed by Frank Hannenlotter, who did uh, Basket Case and Brain Damage, which are also awesome. Brain Damage? Yeah. Not the Dead Alive. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's what it's I was thinking. One, brain oh, damage. I don't think I've seen that. It's good. I should check it and, out. And uh, he just came back after a long hiatus, and he made a movie with uh, R.A. the Rugged Man, the rapper. They Whoa. both wrote the script. <laughs> I haven't seen the, that one know. yet. Bad Biology, I think it's called. I love that that guy came out of retirement <laughs> to be like, you know what? Who's gonna, you know who's going to take me out? This rapper. <laughs> All right, the movie. rugged man. This is what's going to get me out of my slump. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. But uh, we open up in a lab. Um. Well, it's not really no, a lab. No, it's, it's a, a kitchen. kitchen. It's a yeah. kitchen. Uh, yeah, I must have wrote this as <laughs> as it was going and then slowly discovered what was happening. And uh, we see basically a fucking eyeball mashed into a brain <laughs> yeah. that, that this guy, Jeffrey, who we're introduced to. Jeffrey Franken. Is, <laughs> oh, my God. It's so stupid. And it's literally an <laughs> – if you took a human brain and you took an eyeball and you just punched it into the center <laughs> of the brain, that's what it looks like. And somehow this brain is moving and the eye is blinking. Yeah. I don't know what he's trying to create like, or why that would work. And how he jumps from that to full-fledged re- reanimation. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like at least like reanimator – you don't see the slow process. He kind of has this serum. Yeah. And he's been working on it for years and he tests it on a cat. Works. Boom. Go to humans. Fuck. I love the, the anime. This was like, all right, I'm starting out with this brain and this eyeball I'm working on. Eh, fuck it. I'm ready. Three weeks later, ready I'm ready to, to do this. I'm ready to do the real body. Like, I can barely get this eyeball brain to work. And Jeffrey, nobody talks to themselves more than Jeffrey Franken does. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. Jeffrey Franken <laughs> is acting his ass off, <laughs> but he's just by himself at every scene. It's so funny. It's so funny. But, and yeah, the first thing I'm thinking is, this guy's wearing basically like janitor clothes, and he just shoves a scalpel into his brain, and somehow that makes it work. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> right? Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, and I had a note in here. Oh, yeah, my next note was just about how crystal clear it was. I could not believe it. And I said, it's an 80s classic. So I must have found out it was 19. Yeah, mine was not. Mine was like, you just popped in the v- VHS. <laughs> well, I can't talk. VHS. VHS. Wow. That was the letters. That was, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> uh, so we basically find out that this Jeffrey is kind of a, uh, well, besides a weirdo. He's he's performing home surgeries. He's doing tummy tucks. <laughs> yeah, because we're introduced to his fiance, yeah. who's being called fat, and she's not the furthest fat. thing from she's fat. Not fat at furthest all. Furthest thing from fat. And they're like, "What are you gonna do to take care of this?" You're like, oh, Jeffrey's gonna give me a tummy tuck. And everyone's like, "Jeff's not a doctor." <laughs> no, she, he already gave her a tummy tuck. He already performed it. She's like, uh, "I didn't know he was a doctor." She's like, "Well, he's not. He works as a janitor." Good. That's perfect. <laughs> That is perfect. Yeah, he works for the electrical company. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. And then even better is she's outside talking to a friend. She comes in, and Jeffrey is working on a brain with an eyeball in it in the kitchen. She walks <laughs> in, and she, she says, what's this? <laughs> well, it really couldn't be more clear what it is. It's a human brain with a fucking eyeball shoved into it. You got to get He's away. He's not even in a lab. He's at a kitchen, at a kitchen table. During, a, during a cookout where yeah, people are bringing but, food in and out. Like, you know, when you go to a cookout and there's that one <laughs> stupid kid that's just like inside playing video games and you're like, get outside. Everyone else is outside. <laughs> that's Jeffrey, except he's operating. <laughs> Unlicensed. So unsanitary. And where did the brain come from? I, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Or the eyeball. Yeah. Uh, well, this intro was perfect. I loved this intro to really start the movie. Um, so this pick, this cookout was for his father-in-law who it's his birthday. And so his fiance says, Oh, we got you a great present. She takes off this huge packaging and it's, <laughs> a, they call it a lawnmower, but it looks like the biggest snowblower yeah. piece of dangerous shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. It's like a, a military vehicle. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it is. And she she pulls out this remote control and she says, "Oh, and Jeffrey hooked up this remote control <laughs> for you, so you could do it wirelessly." And she says, honestly, Look at, this this is, <laughs> this is one of the the all time greats in, in horror openings ever. I I agree. I completely agree. This was amazing, and it really set an awesome tone for the rest of the movie. That kind of falls flat, but 
at this point, I was like, I was all in. I was all in on this. It was so awesome. So she's holding up the remote, standing in front of the lawnmower, and she says, well, this button turns it on. And this button, I don't know, she said like four things, but really she just says, and this button makes it go forward, and she hits it. And Jeffrey, half-heartedly, I must say, is just like, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, it's almost like that kid from Troll 2 when he's yelling now. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> and this this lawnmower shreds his fiance, and blood and limbs are everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere, <laughs> everywhere all over the lawn. And uh, that's how we open it up. And you kind of... And that's before the opening credits. Yeah, that, and that was awesome. I thought that was a great way to start the movie. It, Dude, a cold open. Yeah, yeah, and it was a great one. Like, it, it, it was great. It was great. A lot of times those cold opens sometimes have, like, nothing to do, especially in horror. It'll just, it'll be shocking and then never come into play yeah. in the movie ever again. That was and, it. That was the gist right there. Yeah, that, and then, and literally I knew exactly what was <laughs> about to happen because his fiance is not a hooker. And then the credits roll, and it's just him talking to himself, which he does the entire movie. The he's talking out movie. equations. So he's, he's, you can tell he's like trying to figure out how to do how to reanimate, mumbling and being like, oh, no, 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 I need six hundred so, volts. He's here. so monotone. He is so monotone, and his accent makes me want to throw up. Oh my god, the worst Jersey accent <laughs> Jersey I have ever heard. He says one word. I wrote it down later. I'm sure I'll find it. It, it was so ridiculous, but his accent is so bad. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! I'm I'm trying to see if I have it. I, I know it's in my notes somewhere, but yeah. So after, we, after the credits, it goes back to him. You know, he's working out equations. Yep. And you, you know that he wants to reanimate, and then he pops in like the news report of the of his which fiance, he has recorded, which he has recorded, and that news report I laughed so hard because it, it shows so, so much gore. Like no news would ever show that, and then the way the woman is talking, she's being so callous. She's yeah. Describing her as like a salad, a, mis- a, yeah, a tossed salad. Yeah, it was crazy. And Pete, interview that was Pete and Pete's officer. mom. That was Pete's mom? Yeah, from Pete and Pete, Adventures of Pete and Pete. Are you serious? Yeah, it was the mom. That Because I looked through the credits to see if anyone had done anything. No. Except her. She was the biggest star in the movie. Wow. And it was because she was in B&B. So I don't know <laughs> if that really makes her a star, but... Ah, she yeah. well, she was awesome in that role. She was so funny. Oh my god, yeah. She's like she she is going into gory details about what happened and yeah, talking about how certain body parts were missing. Were missing, yeah, like a head, which they they're like, we don't want to talk about it, but the head's gone. So talking <laughs> talking about this right now, what a fantastic opening! Like it gives you every single piece. It doesn't make you, it doesn't drag on and make you no for it. it's no, just, and and it knows what I think this movie knew exactly what it was and <clears throat> the. the like what are they gonna do? Like drag this on and be so we're like, oh, it's about a Frankenhooker. It's the fucking yeah. Because I feel I feel like now. Oh my god, this would, would be like, who's gonna re- reanimate her? It like, would be an hour of go? like the origin story <laughs> of like nothing. Yeah, we'd have to watch Jeffrey going to like medical school and failing <laughs> out, and going company. to electrical, <laughs> yeah. being an apprentice for t- ten years. You're right. It would be so awful. Yeah, fuck that. It'd be this awful origin Cut story, the and then thirty like minutes of Frankenhooker. Yeah, yeah. it would be awful. Uh, and Jeff's mom comes in, and she's she's very worried about him. She doesn't want him watching this news clip over and over. And again, another person looks at a brain with an eyeball crammed in it and says, "What's this?" <laughs> And that that conversation with his mother is so long. It's the longest conversation ever. It was it was Kevin Smith length dialogue <laughs> about nothing. I it was the only thing. Yeah, it was like about, that scene like that scene in Tusk when Johnny Depp is talking. Forever. <laughs> like 30 I, that, minutes. Honestly, I think that was the only reason I didn't like that movie. Because I lost so much interest during that scene that I was like, I don't He's even talking want to in a French accent. I don't even want to watch this at this point. I've lost complete interest yeah, in Yeah, it wasn't that bad, but it, I mean it was lengthy. It very was lengthy. it was very lengthy and uh, all to basically say, I'm worried about you, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> and by the way, he's got pictures of just his fiance's head all over. <laughs> did you notice that? I did. All the pictures are just of her head, and they are the worst faces. They're just these like dumbfounded faces. It was so strange, so strange. But this guy Jeffrey, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes and has an Italian dinner with. 
this was fucked up. This was when I was like, I don't, I think I hate this guy. Like, <laughs> this guy's a fucking creep. He, he's eating an Italian dinner with the head of his fiance. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe he's got, seeing as though he has a brain with an eye living in water, maybe the head's going to talk. Nope, it's just a dead head <laughs> that he pours wine into the mouth and it pours all. It just, over. Yeah, it spills all over the table. <laughs> so funny, <laughs> so ridiculous. Um, I mean, it basically informs the head that uh, that in two days a giant storm is coming and that's when he's going to bring his baby back to life. <laughs> you know what's real funny is that the original Frankenstein, <laughs> like you needed lightning because mm-hmm. they didn't have fucking electricity, right? But you could, you, you could just. <laughs> Did Stick not a knife a... into a toaster, like and huh. generate it yourself right now. And you work for an electrical company, <laughs> so you could like take <laughs> like a generator. You could shit. take like straight three phase cables and attach it to it, and put more electricity in that than you have in your house. Yeah. Like what the fuck? <laughs> Why wait for the lightning? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that until now. That's actually infuriating. Uh, he says, "I can, I can make you as the centerfold goddess of this Dude, century." So he has his dead fiance's head taped onto like potential bodies, and they're all just <laughs> this huge busty chicks. Porn. <laughs> he just taped her head to porn and showing it to her as if you know, as if not only did it, that if she understood, but I, like in a way, if she could understand what he was saying, he would still be showing her those, being like, "Look what I could do for you," and she would have been like. <laughs> what no it doesn't even look like me and uh the other weird thing is he says you know i can make you the centerfold goddess of the century yet we know he's going to pick a hooker's body just based on the title right so not exactly a a centerfold can we go back to that storm though because did you see the weather report well that's that's later oh, that's, after. that's okay, later right. that's later and i know you do you know who was in that right Why? the guy who Oh, my God. No, no, I was too busy laughing at the, uh, the set. <laughs> oh, yeah, the set was awful. I'll tell you in a minute. You're gonna... I'm proud of myself for recognizing him. I'm pretty bad at that, but I recognized him as soon as I saw him because he's, he's very recognizable. But Jeff puts the body back, and he starts planning some more. And this guy is just rambling about making life. More more monologues of, <laughs> oh, I'm making, I'm going to make so life. So many monologues. But uh, but he he starts getting nervous about having to find fresh parts. Oh yeah, and this is the weather scene. You're right. You weren't far off. Yeah, so it's like right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I'm the asshole. Uh, so yeah, we get this weather scene starring Ed Zachary, or no, his name's not Ed. John Zachary. Who? Zachary. 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 From the, the Chiller Theater. Yeah, he's no. the weatherman. Yes. What? He is the weatherman. A hundred percent. I can I will guarantee you that. <laughs> and uh Zachary, why don't you talk I, I like, about the I like weather? That you scene ju- I like that you just described Zachary as very recognizable. He's one of the Fuck ug- Zachary. He's one of the ugliest dudes <laughs> I have ever seen. Dude, I saw him in a split second I knew it was Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> Zachary doesn't have- oh. Trying to find his IMDb page. Oh my god! Uh, well, so anyone listening, up, by the way, will be like, "Yes, Zachary Lee is hideous as shit." I could pot spot. He's <laughs> the easiest where Waldo ever. Where's Waldo? Yeah, you are. You are correct. Yes. That was him. Yeah. Uh, so it's just basically the reason that stuck out to me is because I was laughing so hard because the set is. <laughs> Uh, the, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like, it looks like a two-year-old made Z- it. I was just about to say, Zachary <laughs> might have made, made it. Zachary <laughs> made it. Zachary was like, listen, if you put me in this movie, I'm all in for this movie. I'll make the set. I'll, I'll Just make me a weatherman. Dude, I want to take back all the ill will I've said to Zachary because he's old as shit. 1918. He's very old. Wow. Yes, he's very, very old. He, they talk about him on Howard Stern all the time, and Howard's always like, how is he still alive? <laughs> he was like, he was old when I was a kid, when I watched <laughs> Chiller Theater. He's like, how the fuck is he still old? Uh, and then we get the craziest scene here. So Jeff, Jeffrey, and I shouldn't say the craziest scene. There's a lot <laughs> nope. of crazy scenes, <laughs> nope. but this is up there for me. The uh, drill? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, what? This was in a, this is, and I know this movie's over the top, but I was, you, you want to, you <laughs> Tone it down a little bit. He he's really nervous about. We're, we're figuring out he's going to have to kill somebody to get these fresh parts, and he's very nervous about the whole thing. And he he wants to back out of it. <laughs> and he says, "Wait a minute!" And he goes into his bowling ball bag, pulls out a fucking drill, 
looks at just briefly looks at a map of the brain and is like, okay, 51. And just drills a hole in his head. And he's like massaging. He's, he's talking while drilling his dr- brain. Talking, yeah, and he's drilling his brain. And I, I guess we're supposed to assume that this drill is turning off the yeah. section of his brain yeah. with like empathy and, right. and stuff. But then he takes a drill and then he's like, I can't do it. <laughs> so <laughs> but then he does it again. Yeah, he does it again to just like rev himself up. Uh, and that was that was that was pretty wild. And he says, if I need female body parts, I'll buy female body parts. Yeah. Oh, and this is where he says the word because he's he. This is the word he says that that I just wanted to punch him in the face with that horrible accent. He he starts driving out. I, it looks like New York City is my guess. Yeah, he Kinda, says it. They oh, does the, he goes to the Van Wick? Oh, okay, yeah. So he goes he goes to New York City and he's going through all these areas with all these prostitutes. And he goes, "What a buffet! <laughs> a buffet, <Yeah>. you jerk! <laughs> you friggin' jerk! No one has ever said buffet." You know what? This is 1990 New York. I feel like it was starting to clean up a bit, but then at the same time, I feel like that's really what it looked like. Uh, I feel like that he went to a section where it looked like that. No, 90s time. were definitely still pretty rough. That though, that was that's, definitely staged. Like I mean, a that's staged like 82. Area. That wasn't like maniac, like just filming on the street. <laughs> And being like, wow, that set is disgusting. Yeah. Like, oh, that's no, not it's not a set. A set. That, that's just a camera crew out in the daytime. Yeah. Like, that was not this. This this yeah. looked a little bit like a set, actually, now that I think about it. But it, I don't know if New York was that bad. There were probably areas, but. I mean, even as a kid, though, like. I mean, Giuliani was the one where he. Still it was seedy. It was still like pretty seedy. Adult film. Oh yeah, and, and, and St. Mark's area was still just St. Mark's yeah. place and stuff. That was still just a heroin Fuck, I miss, I miss old New York. I'll, I'm going to tell a story here that I don't think I should tell, but I used to work with a guy. He was a mess. <laughs> I think you told us during the Maniac. Did I? Yeah. They said he stabbed <laughs> yeah, a guy yeah. in New York. I told that? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That yeah. is awful. Allegedly. I don't know if I edited that out or not, but yeah, this gentleman allegedly claimed he went to New York City just to stab a homeless guy. <laughs> like just to to feel it well and i said you know what i think we're done here <laughs> i'll see you later pal and i, I never talk to him again because that's just even if that's not real to <laughs> claim that is a very strange <laughs> claim to make stupid asshole yeah yeah not a good one and we hear our first what a day yeah just like our just like the vhs just like the cover right? which makes me appreciate that cover a little bit more now knowing that that was actually like yeah, and it sounded just like it. Sounded just like it. That fantastic audio effects yeah. on a on a on a thing. <laughs> on a cardboard box. Yeah. So this girl approaches the car, uh, hooker, and he's he's very nervous. He's trying to talk to her. He's he shows her this huge wad of cash though, and she just loses her mind and she runs over to the passenger seat. And she's like, "Let me in." Let me in. <laughs> I also like that the prostitute, some of the prostitutes are already topless. Like they haven't been paid yet or picked up. It was just, insane. Just it up. was insane. There were so many boobs in this. <laughs> and so this girl is trying to get in fearsomely just to get this cash. And Jeffrey hangs out the window and is like, hey, I need more girls. I need a lot more girls. And we see the longest scene of walking I've ever seen in a movie <laughs> in my life. This prostitute goes, hey, I think it's like – Andrea or something. Hey, Andrea, come over here. And it starts playing this sexy movie. It was over 20 seconds long of Andrea just walking from a lamp post about 100 yards away uh, to camera. Real-time walking. To ca- it was real-time walking. It was. It was over 20 seconds. I was like, what is this? And then it just – and then it eventually – Concluded with nothing. I mean, it, yeah, it concludes with him watching some talk show on legalizing prostitution. Yes, yes, and there are just so many boobs, so many boobs. <laughs> but she says uh, the prostitutes basically. He says he needs he needs six six women. Yes, six. six. Yep. And uh, they say, well, you got to talk to Zorro, and Zorro will let you know if you could have us, basically. Yeah. And he goes into this bathroom. <laughs> Why the king pimp of New York City is hanging out in a bathroom <laughs> with know. the prostitutes who are having sex with in stalls? Yeah. yeah, it's very strange. And Zorro is pretty, uh, pretty reasonable. <laughs> Zorro's also a very silly looking man, very fit. 
And he has his, the thickest caterpillar mustache. His arms, yeah. He this guy is feeling. <laughs> he talks. He talks so silly. Talks so silly. <laughs> it is the silliest accent. It's so weird. It, it, Zoro is the weirdest character I might have ever seen in a movie. He's so weird, and his arms are are like double the size of his body. <laughs> his arms are absolutely enormous. And in any scene. <laughs> No matter what he's doing, he holds up like a bag of crack. He's just flexing, he's flexing yeah. holding the bag of crack over his bicep. I think I loved Zoro. I, I love Zoro. <laughs> Zoro is amazing. And Zoro basically says, he's a very reasonable guy. He just says, yeah, you can have those girls. <laughs> Pretty pointless scene, except for the fact that Jeffrey picks up that these girls are willing to do anything for crack. So he gets an idea and he buys some crack buys from crack. Zoro. Yeah. <laughs> and this movie just gets more insane as we cut to Jeffrey. Is that when he's back watching the yes the, the, the like the talk show? Yeah, yeah. He's bugging out about um, so some lady wants to legalize prostitution. She has this company called Hooker, which actually was like a clever acronym. Acronym. I forget. I didn't. Write I don't. Down I didn't write it down it. either because I was just I was too busy looking at Jeffrey's insane face. <laughs> Jeffrey is freaking out. He's like, don't you know that she's right? And then he starts screaming about how crack is hurting prostitutes. Yeah, it's insane. And then we find out that he is making super crack (laughs) to kill them. (laughs) It was the craziest scene. Why are they doing this to themselves? But he's making super crack. Yeah, and... Which is in a huge vibe. (laughs) It's like like what a beaker... From the Muppets has, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It was was a chemistry set out of the Muppets. It's just smoke pouring out of everything and just a giant tub (laughs) of crack rock. Huge crack rock. Huge crack crack rock. And we're supposed to assume, it it looks like we're supposed to assume that this crack rock like travels through a tube and falls into, (laughs) it falls into this bin full of crack rock. Yeah, It's It's like one of those water. And, you know, I thought they would take a hit and, you know, die. Oh my god, it's so funny. <laughs> it's so much better than and he that. And so he says, the best part is he says, he's, again, a monologue. And he says, I'm not shooting anyone. I'm not stabbing anyone. I'm just putting a lethal dose of crack in their presence. <laughs> what? <laughs> that, you are a terrible person. You could, in an alternate universe, this movie could just be about Jeffrey Franken, the sociopath. <laughs> The sociopath slash psychopath, because he is nuts. And he tests this super crack out on his guinea pig. Yeah. Who he is talking sexually to. That was very weird. Very strange. And uh, basically, though, he says, you know, sniff up, sniff up. And the (laughs) guinea pig smells the smoke and explodes. (laughs) Straight up blows up. (laughs) (laughs) And you're talking about a guy that is trying to... Get, harvest body, harvest parts. body parts, and he is okay. I thought he was going to be like, "Oh, this is not going to work." See, even even though it was a guinea pig that blew up, I still thought they would just like take a hit and just be dead. You know, that's what I thought too. I, that's what I thought after he was like, "Okay," I was like, "Oh, no, yeah. that's not the result I would want." But sure, it's probably going to work out for you. But <laughs> it does and it doesn't. So uh, this asshole Jeffrey decides to dress up as a doctor, and this is the night he is going to have his party with the. The six, six the prostitutes. six prostitutes. So he picks him up. Uh, he is dressed as a doctor. Which the doctors ever really wear that like headband with with the, refle- the reflection glass I mean, on their forehead? I've watched some time period movies and shows. You're talking about Mad Men. You're talking about older stuff. The the, the American Horror Stories had some older stuff. Yeah, but what's the point of that? It's, a, it's a mirror, right? It's nothing. I, my guess is it reflects light uh, to what you're okay. looking at because right. it was before they could. Put a light on their head, I guess. But I don't think anyone. This was 1990. I mean, I was alive in 1990. Where would he even get that? I don't remember my doctor having that. Or that would be like the biggest giveaway that this guy's not a doctor. (laughs) Like, uh, I mean, so so he brings these prostitutes back. He's dressed as a doctor with one of those things, and then he is just inspecting them, which is awesome because. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god he's taking magnifying glasses to their nipples and poking and squeezing and going underneath their legs <laughs> examining awesome. everything <laughs> awesome utterly awesome but he's not doing utterly. it in a, se- he said in a sexual utterly. way <laughs> no not at all <laughs> he's, literally, he's looking at their body parts oh my god the pun utterly when you're talking about a woman's I, nipple I is the worst that pun ever. <laughs> and i was hoping for more to write down and that was the that was that was all they could come up with awesome utterly awesome oh <sighs> jeffrey 
Dude, that, that actor has it made. No acting chops, just lands in this movie and just pokes porn stars all tits all the, whole time. All the whole time. Probably time. multiple takes. <laughs> probably hundreds of takes. <laughs> crawling under the legs. Do you think those porn actresses could actually act? They were probably all over the place. They were probably screwing up those <laughs> takes left and right. Oh, my gosh. And that's what we got. Those were our final cuts, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So him and these girls, they they start getting into it a little bit because he's running out of time and he, he can't decide which girl. He, he has to pick one of the six. Well, yeah, he wants to, he wants to pick the best one. He wants to pick the best one, and he made a deal with Zora that he was going to at least take one of them, and he can't make a decision. So they get into a fight, and he says, "You want your money? You want your money?" Wait, wait, wait no, 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 no. Let me get my New York. You want your money? You want your money? And he throws the bag at him. <laughs> no, no, because he's like, I can't do this to any of you. And then he's screaming oh, at yeah. them. He's screaming at you. Don't you see what I'm doing? Yeah. No. Why would they? Why, why would how would they, they know? How would they doing? ever know? I mean, it is weird that you're acting oh, like a you're doctor. Oh, you're not going to kill us. Then. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's what this is. You're harvesting our body parts. <laughs> Don't you see what I'm doing? Yeah, it should have picked up on that by the nothing, by the absolutely no signs yeah. that I gave. So he throws the money bag. They open it. And they find the money and a gigantic bag, which, by the way, he said was for one of them. He's like, that's only for one of you. And it was like, must have been 13 pounds of crack rock in there in a giant Ziploc bag. And these girls go bananas. Yeah, nuts. Bananas. Uh, and the weirder thing, though, and by the way, I never want to be at a party like this. Oh. Mm. Oh no! There's lots of boobs. Think about it. No, but like, think. No, you don't want to be in a party where there's that many hookers and crack. That sounds like a nightmare. It seemed pretty fun before the explosions. Oh. Well, I think the explosions seemed more fun. <laughs> but the weirdest part of this is there's music playing in the background. I know it was some ridiculous knockoff of like White Lines by uh and Grandmaster Flash. And, and there's just talking in it, and it's the, the only things I picked up were Russian letters never grow old. <laughs> what the fuck is that? And and never say no. <laughs> and it was just this thing, and he and he's and even when the song comes on, he's like, "That's the devil's music. Turn it off. Turn yeah. it off." And I was like, "Did I miss something at the beginning of this?" Like, no, it was just it was just <laughs> weird. It was just they recorded music, so they didn't have to pay rights. And and should we talk about this really those really weird statements he made when the two girls started kissing each other? Oh, it was like, what was it like? Your body's not supposed to do that or something. Stop. That is not natural. Your body wasn't meant to do that. <laughs> is this anti-gay film? Is this anti-gay propaganda film? It was Dude, so I, strange. I read somewhere that this was a, pro, a pro-feminist a film. No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I assure you it is not a pro-feminist mm. film. I'm sold. When we get to the ending, we'll talk about an alternate ending that would have been more pro-feminist, but it was not pro-feminist. <laughs> it was not pro-feminist at all, as a matter of fact. It's very womanizing, and he kills six hookers right now. Right now. So so they start smoking the uh, super crack. And they are just, they are like putting these giant rocks. I mean, the tubes are so skinny, and the rocks are like, like <laughs> I can't even describe it. It's like, like a, golf a ball straw size. and then like, like yeah. a, a fist. A, a McDonald's straw and, yeah. Uh, yeah, some of them were even bigger than yeah. a golf ball. They're like, like the size of your fist. Just trying to put it on and light it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to light it. Like, this is crazy. And the girl starts saying, oh, yeah, you know, the first one says, it's awful hot in here. And she, he's just yelling, hit the deck, hit the deck. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? The acting in this. The lines in this are just ridiculous. Yeah. Just ridiculous. We see the first one, boom, she explodes. Explodes. Then two, then three, then four and five. And you see a leg that's just flying through the air, but it's clearly whoever's behind the camera yeah, is just holding, holding it in front of them, which is going real slow. hundred percent. It is so ridiculous. And honestly, this was the most disappointing scene in the movie for me. This is where the movie kind of lost me, only because this was a perfect opportunity to just throw blood everywhere. They had to cut back from the M- MPAA rating. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, that sucks because did they really care? Did they think this is going to be That's what I'm saying. Like, (laughs) why not just go with it? I'd honestly rather you cut some of the ridiculous titty scenes out. The magnifying glass on the nipple was a a little much. I mean, give me some blood because this was literally just like sparklers going off. I mean, but it wasn't even like that bad. Like, you know. I was let down by it. But Zorro (laughs) is pissed. 
because the girls are late. So he goes up there. He starts trying to kick down the door, kicks it down. As a girl's exploding. Zoro is the best. <laughs> Zoro is the best. Zoro opens the door and a hooker's head comes flying at him 100 miles an hour and <laughs> knocks him off. Ooh, ooh. There's a lot of grunts and stuff in this movie. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I have so many notes on this movie and I'm not even mad about it. There's some movies where I write a shitload of notes and I, I'm pissed. This one is not one of them. Yeah, this, this one is, this I mean one was just so fun to watch. I I, I have so much to say. I wish I so could like pinpoint exactly what it is because in some movies when you see something as shitty right. as like the leg going, you're right. like, wow, that was really shitty. Right. But something about this, you're like, that was awesome that it had no effect to it. It was just clearly right. a mannequin leg. What, and what is it about it? Like I, I can't. I've been trying to figure it out for years. It's like, impossible. I don't know what makes one good and one not enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. So Jeffrey gets out of there, picking up the bags and putting them in garbage bags, <laughs> saying shit like, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to do this. This wasn't supposed to happen. That's exactly what he meant to It's exa- oh, 100%. <laughs> maybe not six of them, but you were going to kill one of them. Yeah. And you had enough crack rock to kill all of them. Millions, <laughs> millions of people. Uh, he brings the body parts down to his lab. Yep. And he has a plate full of. Do you remember? No. He has a plate. It's just filled with tits. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was ridiculous. That. Oh, they just couldn't help themselves. They just couldn't help <laughs> the plate themselves. Plate full of tits. <laughs> and they're all still firm. I love all the, the all the breasts survive. <laughs> like you could just take off a breast and still be like big and like yeah plump. yeah yeah. It was ridiculous. Like nothing's falling out of them. They're just slabs <laughs> yeah, of meat. It's just, it, was, it was so ridiculous. Um, and basically, this is honestly this is like kind of when the movie starts slowing down a little bit to me. Yeah, yeah. To me, this Actually, scene was I, very long. I skipped forward in my notes a little bit. Like I didn't like like before I was like writing on everything me too. And right that, here I just kind of went to the main point. Same points. here because it really gets kind of slow Which here. Isn't not oh, I don't want to say it's slow because it was still enjoyable. It just It was enjoyable. Like, it it just not a lot's happening. Yeah, I think There's the a first lot of, half was more ridiculousness. I, I think the they were like, "Oh shit, we need uh we need a Frankenhooker. We need we need <laughs> yeah, we need to extend this movie longer than an hour." <laughs> Cuz at this point it's an hour and Frankenhooker is made. Yeah. It's actually less than an hour, I think. So he he basically puts Frankenhooker together, gets the storm, yeah. they get the lightning strike, he goes down. He, the typical Frankenstein movie, oh, I failed. She's not alive. <laughs> Elizabeth, what happened? Every Frankenstein fucking movie. <laughs> and then, want a date? Looking yeah. for some action? First thing that she says, want yeah. a date. Want a date? Looking for some action? Want some company? Oh, my God. I wonder how that voice is going to come out on this recording. It's probably going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's no other way I can do it. <clears throat> do you hear my giant gorilla voice? It takes a lot for me to hit those high notes. And uh, she <laughs> smacks Jeffrey down because cold. he's got no money. Yeah. Knocks his ass out. Which is funny because she still has the head and brain of Elizabeth. She just has like the arm and boobs of hookers. That's and, it. But she talks like the hookers. But they she's have all ta- her memories. She is. But not even all of their memories, just like the last two days of memories <laughs> <laughs> from the hookers and just about Jeffrey. Uh, yeah, it's it's really strange. Um, and Jeff Jeffrey, she goes off into the night. She's out of here. She's out into New York City, out into the blue. Jeffrey wakes up. And he runs outside to try and find her. And he says, what does what does she want a date for? She wanted money? <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> Are you fucking stupid? Well, yes. yes. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, but not. And uh, Jeffrey can't figure out what happened, and then he's like, "Oh, we, I get it. She's mixed with hookers." Yeah. Fucking jerk. <laughs> and Elizabeth is just out in New York City, basically killing everyone. She's just slapping people all around for no more. Pushing, pushing them left and right. Uh, imagine if prostitutes were the that aggressive. The faces that this actress is making is so funny while she's talking. I. I love her. I think she's so funny. <laughs> I she's the best actress in the movie. I think she cracks me up. Those faces, the twitching of the mouth, and she was yeah, she was really funny. Like that. That's some. I good wish when I talked to her a couple months ago, I wish I just had her like make. Oh, faces. was she there? Yeah, she's. Oh, I wish I just had her make faces. God damn it! I yeah, wish she I was talking her. to me about uh, how people come up to her all the time, and they're like, "Will you please sign this VHS that I stole from?" The, oh like, yeah, the video right. Store. We talked about that. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh my god! And she picks up this like Danny DeVito wannabe. The uh, he reminded me more of. I just mumbled so bad. He reminded me more of uh, the dude from Human Centipede Two. Very much. It's like Danny DeVito plus that guy. <laughs> 
and it's awful. <laughs> he's he's that, this guy's out of control. This guy is out of control. This guy is hamming it up. This guy is thinking I've made it to Hollywood. I am the star of Frankenhooker. He, he, is, he is overacting. That's <laughs> oh, for sure. He's giving good. it his all. He is giving it everything. Give it everything you got. And uh, he's very excited to have sex with Frankenhooker. Oh, yeah. Very excited. Even though she's purple and white and, like, I mean, not the most white, like, terrifi- pale, The white. most terrifying colors I've ever seen <laughs> with a black forearm. <laughs> with a black woman's forearm. The weirdest with Heather thing. Hunter's forearm. <laughs> it was crazy. I actually like the makeup, though. I think they did a pretty cool job of it. I like everything. For such a cheap movie, I was expecting so much worse. But the colors that they did for, <laughs> for the such bodies. such a cheap $2.5 million movie. Well, knowing that now, it was <laughs> spent all on painting her. Probably every scene. Repainting her every scene. Well, to briefly sum up this guy that she picked up, she, uh, she fucks him, electrocutes him, explodes him, and then his decapitated head says... Oh, that was wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's not attached to well, the body. Well, his head's, yeah, disattached from the body. And she's basically, the next few scenes are just so weird. And this is where, it just like why I didn't have to write a lot. She basically leaves. Then she sees another guy. She kisses him. He fucking explodes. <laughs> and she's just still on the loose. And Jeffrey's looking for her. And that's basically the next, like, yeah, my notes were minutes. my notes were exactly that. Another guy kisses her, explodes. She loves pretzels. More explosions. What what was the pretzel joke? Was because, that a because, callback? Because in the very beginning, like right after we see Jeffrey playing with the brain and the eyeball, she goes outside and she's eating pretzels. And the girl's like, "I would eat the unsalted pretzels if I were you," or something like that. Because oh, she, she, yeah, she calls her fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why she gives her that, that that lady that look when she's like, "Ease up on the pretzels." Well, that went away over my head. <laughs> I missed that completely. That is, I guess that's funny. But it doesn't make sense because she's in the hooker's br- Whatever. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to try and do it. I'm not going to do it this time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm making you a promise. Unlike any other movie we've ever talked about, I refuse to pick this apart. Yeah, no. Great joke. <laughs> Best joke ever. Best joke ever. Uh, meanwhile, she, she goes into this bar with the pretzels. Yeah. And Zorro's there. Yes. And she he overhears her because she's just repeating the same lines over and over as the hooker, which is like, Jeffrey, you want to be a doctor? You got a big thermometer? Like, oh, yeah, I'll be your patient. Stuff like that. Weird <laughs> shit that she had already said to Jeffrey in the last couple of days while she was among the living. Yeah. But Zorro picks up on this and uh, he, he's, he's wise to it, but he, he doesn't understand who she is. He, he's very confused by the whole thing. He's like, you, you, you got my, my mark on you, but you're not one of my girls. Who are you? And he punches her head off. <laughs> he literally, literally punches her head off. Head off. It's oh, it's he- <laughs> held on by like a, her spinal cord, but it's oh, flat to yeah. her back. It is awesome. Yeah. I love Zorro so <laughs> much. Uh, but Jeffrey comes in and he, he gets her, her head back on and he rushes her out. Um, and meanwhile, people are fleeing the bar. Because she killed Zorro's friend by doing something with him. Uh, he was like eating her. Yeah, he's going down going on down her. Going down on her. He <laughs> got electrocuted and smoking through his feet. <laughs> and, and smoke is everywhere because she just electrocuted a human being. And all these people are choking on How bad do you think human Frankenhooker's vag smells? It's awful. Why would you even go down there? <laughs> Frankenhooker's vag is probably the worst. Okay, so <laughs> the, one, the one guy that Danny DeVito that wants to have sex with her. I kind of get it. You can imagine one guy in the world is so desperate yeah. that he can overlook the gigantic scars and all the different colors and all that. But the guy going down on her. <laughs> Stop he's it. Doing it for- and she's dressed as a prostitute. So it's like, and he's like doing it for free. He's like, I might be in love with you. Let me try this out. Like, let me woo you here. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Yeah, that guy deserved it. Yeah. He deserved his fate. And uh, so Jeffrey takes her home. And this is, I don't know how Zoro figures out where he lives, but he, <laughs> but he shows up. He shows up. Zoro does not have a car. And I mean, Jeffrey takes her and is in a car and out of there in a split second. Zoro, don't, I don't even think, sees the car come out. Or I don't even think he sees the car leave. Zoro comes out well after the car's gone. Yeah. Yet somehow finds his way to his house. But Jeffrey brings her to the house. He's trying to get her back to life. He zaps her one more time. And again, the whole like, oh, I loved you, Elizabeth. Like, what happened? And she's back. Yeah. 
Liz is back, and uh, with all of her actual memories, she's saying she's calling him Jeffrey. And, yep. And the best, the the, other, the second best line of the movie, she's he says, "I brought you back to life, Elizabeth." I brought, <clears throat> oh, let me get into character. I brought you back to life, Elizabeth. <laughs> she says, "How? I don't know. A bunch of things I got written down over there." <laughs> Best explanation ever. Best explanation ever. Because in that situation, no one's going to be like, well, you see, uh, yeah, dear Elizabeth. Yeah, tell all the theories yeah, and mathematical yeah, yeah. equations. I did this and this and this. It would be like, shit over there. any normal person's like, no fucking clue. There's a pile of shit over here. I've been working on it for like, <laughs> remember that fucking brain with the eyeball you saw in the kitchen? Like, the day you died? That's it. This is you. That's <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> you should have picked up on that. We, we 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 were engaged. <laughs> we were engaged, you bitch. And so Jeff Zorro appears. Oh my god, Jeffrey's pouring his heart out to her. He's saying, "I love you so much," because she's pretty pissed about the body she received, <laughs> and I don't blame her. And she's, "I love you, Elizabeth." And Zorro sneaks in and straight up decapitates. Fucking the head goes flying off. Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's head. head. <laughs> Zorro is alive and well, thankfully. Well, not for long. Not for long, because as soon as Jeffrey's head comes off, uh, Elizabeth is yelling at him, and then Zorro is attacked by these deformities that have been in uh, Jeffrey's Which w- makes no sense compared to anything else in the movie. And did you say this guy directed Basket Case? Yeah. It had to have been the same special effects guys. Cause these yeah, are, like these, Belial. Yeah, this was Belial. This was like six different Belials, but just... <laughs> They were probably Belial prototypes. Yeah. That with just boobs glued on. And he's been saving for eight years. <laughs> Finally. Finally, I get to use all the Belial. <laughs> this was supposed to be for Basket Case 4. <laughs> when Basket Case, when Belial has a family. Have you seen all the Basket Cases? Oh, yeah. Are there <laughs> any other Belials or no? Oh, yeah. Oh, like like well, uh, like other I hope my memory is serving me, serving me well because I was under the influence at the time of watching one of them uh I think it was the third one and I'm pretty sure Belial has like a Belial car which <laughs> which has the I dice I just fit my coffee but, but it's everywhere. Like, but it's like oh my god <laughs> Someone tell me if I'm right because I remember it being almost like Krang from uh Ninja <laughs> Turtles but so he's like driving this like big Belial mobile that looks like Belial and and it has like dice hanging from the the windshield in it oh and he has god. kids I think, that, I think that's the third. I think that's the third one. Well, he does like his sex. He does like to have sex or try to. Or ooh, I don't know. That first basket case is really good. I've not watched the sequel, so. I mean, I remember really enjoying them, especially that one with the. I remember laughing really hard. You know, I'd probably like. It sounds like I'd like the sequels more because the first one was like super over the top. Uh, but it was also pretty serious. And it was kind of like sad in a way. Like it was just kind of weird. Hmm. And uh, I, I would, I wish there was more straight up, just ridiculous laughs, just ridiculous like, like Belial driving cars <laughs> and Belial children. Car. <laughs> like that sounds perfect to me. That sounds like the perfect horror movie. So <laughs> Jeffrey's decapitated. Zorro has been these these baby Belials have pulled Zorro in, back into the <laughs> freezer, which I guess we're assuming he's dead. But Elizabeth has an idea, and Jeffrey starts waking up, and Elizabeth is standing in front of him. We get a pan out, and he is in a woman's body. Yes. I don't know whose Life body. No, I, whose body is I, that? It was all the I thought it was going to be his mom's, which would have been just so fucked well, up. Oh, my God. You know, it was a big woman, too, like his mom. But, uh, yeah. So he's in a woman's body, and he is not happy. Not happy at all. And it basically just ends with Jeffrey moaning. <laughs> and he's just in a woman's huge, huge woman's body. And not even like huge, just like a very and, large. And again, woman. she explains like how did you how did you put me together? And she's just like, yeah, you kept good notes. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kept very good notes that you told me about. And that's the end of the movie. Uh, going back to Basket Case Three, uh, the cover of Basket Case Three is a a Belial crib. <laughs> so is that the real one? Is that the real cover? Because yeah. that looks like it's alive. No, no, that's it. Oh, that's crazy. They straight up stole that pretty much sure, alive. Congratulations. I'm pretty sure that's the one. Where, 
We need to do this alive. It's like one of my favorite. <laughs> Dwayne movies. recovers from his delusional breakdown to find his freakish basket bound brother Belial will soon become a father. <laughs> <laughs> what? I need I need to watch all the sequels now because how does it get from one to that? From the original to that, where Belial is basically non functioning. I'm, I'm positive he had this car. <laughs> <laughs> But I digress. So yeah, Frank and Hooker. Yeah, so what'd you think? Loved it. It was so damn good. I think this is the first movie that we both really, really liked that we've reviewed. Really? I Ever? Joe, I'm pretty sure we start out on some movies and we're like, this movie was pretty cool. And then by the end, we're like, this movie is fucking dread. I think we liked The Maniacs. Oh, Maniac was great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was true. That's true. I will say my fiance watched this and Zombievers, and as soon as this one ended, she said, well, that was way better than Zombievers. Yeah, and... Uh, Which I was surprised with. You know what, though? I, after thinking about Zombievers, I actually liked that movie. Wait, what? I do. I, You know, I came into it, and I, I think in the podcast you'll hear me, and I'll say... I think I said I liked it, and then I slowly changed my mind as we talked about it. But overall, it's not... It's not bad. It's a good movie. I just don't. I just don't like movies that are like, get it? It's a bad movie. Wink, right, right. wink. No, that's what much. we were saying. Yeah. yeah, just just make the just make a bad movie. <clears throat> right. Well, we get it. Just make it shitty. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. But Frankenhooker's reign supreme on that one. Yeah, for sure. So we have some. We actually have some great fan mail that I am not prepared to pull up. <laughs> but I'm working on. And uh, we had some great fans send us some emails about Zombievers and a great fan on our Facebook, a uh, new, new guy that started following us, and he, he gave us a great idea for our next show. So we're going to talk about that real fast. I'll just, we'll just read these. They're pretty cool. So Camp Counselor Frying Pan, our buddy on uh, Tumblr, she said, Oh, my God, Zombievers. Looking forward to listening to the new episode. I have a story about Zombievers. My friend Casey and I have horror movie days where we just sit around the house and watch up to five movies in one sitting. That's a lot of movies. It's five movies. Yeah. It's my kind of weekend. The, one of the guys from that Frasier podcast, that Matt Myra, said he did six movies in a day once, and that's his record. And I was like, that's a fucking lot of movies. Um, you can, I say, can, I, can I say first names? Yeah. That's not giving anything away. So no. our buddy Paul. Yeah. <clears throat> I, w- I went to college with him. He once, <laughs> he once watched 52 movies in one week. While going to class and going to the, going to all of his classes and going to the gym, daily. how do you do that, dude? I don't know, but it was it was. I, and he lived with me, and I knew it because he just like didn't sleep, and I would be he'd be starting a new movie. How can he do that? I I tried to do. Dude, that's the record, fifty two. So I don't know I've been how you keeping can track. It. I've been watching a lot of horror movies just to be educated when we talk about this. Have a lot of references, and before I bought my house, I was on. I th- I thought I was nuts by being able to do like thirty in a thirty day month. Like I do one a day. Yeah, and that's a that's, lot. That's, that's, that's fucking. Dude, it was lot. one week. I wish we could do calls. Like just call them up right now and be like, "Remember that time you did that? How did you, you do that?" Probably should. We should probably do that. Oh, fuck. We'll do it another time because right. that way you can text. We'll do it on the next episode, All right. and you can text <laughs> them and let them know we're gonna call them and have put them on speakers. Yeah, yeah. Have, just do it on have speaker. them talk. It'll be, our, it'll be our first interview. That'd be the guy that watched <laughs> the guy that watched. <laughs> In a week. What movies? Does he have a list? He did at the time. <laughs> you know, he, he collected DVDs. At one point, he had like 1,300. What? Yeah. If you go into his basement right now at his new house, it's, it's just bookcases upon bookcases of DVDs. Oh, my god! He's still buying DVDs. What? Even though he owns Netflix. Dude, I, I don't understand that. And we have I see a lot of people on Instagram post their horror movie collections, and it's like six shelves full of DVDs, and I just... I get it. I like a lot of the artwork. I think it's really great. See, I do buy I, still, but I mean, I, I should have rephrased that because I like and what you're saying. I like buying to collect and stuff. Yeah, like have a collection. And I still do that to support it. But like, he goes like every Tuesday when new movies like come out. And just like, buys. Like, just, like, like I would yeah, have to be like, it would be like, like I see some special edition tech. Te- <clears throat> wow, Texas Chainsaw Massacres, like with cool cover yeah, art. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, oh, I gotta get that. Like that's amazing. Yeah, because I love that movie. I wouldn't just go and be like, Meh, sure, Interstellar, <laughs> uh, Selma, sure, I'll buy them all. Yeah, like, yeah. What? that's what he does. He goes to like midnight at Walmart that's and buys them. Crazy, yeah. and they're so expensive. If you're gonna buy them all, you might as well just wait. Until, wait, yeah, just buy them all. Wait, and then you, wow. 
Well, I just totally hijacked your reading of this. Email. No, that that was an incredible story, and we will we will interview Paul soon. <laughs> he may be angry. Yeah, he'd probably be super pissed. Um, so oh, so she says, you know, my friend Casey and I have horror movie days where we sit around and watch up to five movies in one sitting. We watched Zombievers, and right as it ended, Casey's fiance came home, and she started it up, and we immediately watched it again. <laughs> Which is what we were talking about with Thanks Killing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You said the exact same thing. You immediately watched it. Now, I enjoyed Zombie Beavers quite a lot, but I don't know that it's twice in a row good. Yeah. It's Interested not. to hear what you all thought of it. No, not twice in a it's, row. It's not. Not twice in a row. And we did it twice in a row that day because we watched it again here. So um, I don't think we should really comment on that because <laughs> we did it. Uh, but thanks for sharing. Yeah, no, that was an awesome email. I was really. Happy that she sent us that. Another Zombievers one we got was our buddy Misty, who I actually know in person, in real life. IRL. Do I know her? No. Yeah. I know her through my wife. Uh, she says, listening to this makes me both want to watch this now and never watch it ever. <laughs> <laughs> it still doesn't sound as bad as, and let me know if you've heard of this, Axe Giant, The Wrath of Paul Bunyan. <laughs> Have you ever heard of it? No, that? but now I want to. I guess it's on Netflix. So she says, seriously, if you haven't watched that, I she says, I dot dot dot. I don't know if I can recommend it. It's just terrible. <laughs> it should still be on Netflix. I look forward to hearing what you think of the attractiveness of its actors, which her and her husband have dubbed Idaho Pretty. <laughs> which <laughs> I guess that's like like Texas hot or whatever. Sure. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, and the inconsistent CGI and the absolutely baffling plot. <laughs> I cannot wait to watch it. I think we might have to do it for the show. Uh, that sounds absolutely incredible. Paul. Wait. Axe Giant, The Wrath of Paul Park. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is that? And then finally, last. Is Paul even- Bunyan a monster? Like a, a- uh, Well, if, if memory serves. <laughs> Your cat or your fiance is dead. And one of them <laughs> killed each other. <laughs> there was a murder in this house. Uh, no, Paul Bunyan was not a monster. But if we know anything about horror movies and fairy tales and f- fables, they just randomly turn them into monsters <laughs> and say, deal sure. with it. Sure. Leprechauns, Rumpelstiltskin, <laughs> Jack Frost. We can be here all night. Uh, so, new fan. Uh, added us on Facebook, which all of you guys should do. I'm going to try to make Facebook our Facebook page more cool. Uh, Brian, Brian, I don't know if I should say his full name, but it's yeah. like on our page. But I would just say Brian. Brian J. He sent us uh, a note on Facebook, and he said, you guys need to do an Essentials of Horror episode. It would be neat to hear what you guys think is classic horror. Couldn't be more accurate i think that is genius that's one of those topics that we could probably talk about forever i feel like i have a lot of work like out for me. six it's weeks so hard to six weeks yeah i mean and and what i th- i think i told him i said you know what that's a genius idea and i wanted to do these kind of quarterly specials for us uh where we really get in depth and it's like a two-part episode and I think this is what we should do i think we should do this for this summer it'll be our summer special and really talk about if you had to, no one's ever seen a horror movie in their life, and you are getting ready. Yeah, you say, "What is horror movie? What is a horror movie?" This is what you need to watch, and you'll be you'll know what horror is. So, would you tackle it chronologically? I think I would not. I think I would tackle it in kind of subgenres, but chronologically. So I would probably start <laughs> out with. So do you know what I mean? So I because. Really, chronologically is by subgenre. I mean, you're starting with monsters, yeah, because that's all there was. Right, there wasn't anything else back then. You can kind of talk about Psycho being that shift in, yeah. Oh shit, that's not a fucking monster. That's a just a nutty dude. Like, right, right. <laughs> that's crazy. And uh, I don't know. You can kind of split it up with that. Where chronologically, I like it. I like yeah. It. There's there's a lot of ways you can do it, but uh, we'll have to think of that ourselves. And but I think that's what we're gonna do. But Brian, because he came up with the awesome idea, I asked him what he thought, and he wrote a pretty cool response to us, uh, and I'm just going to read it here because I I think it's absolutely awesome. Uh, And by the way, we kind of did talk about our essentials for Halloween on our old podcast. Yeah, we did. And it was – and that's when we decided um, we should probably – 
we were so it was one. the only time we were passionate during that entire we had this old podcast it was like 10 episodes and it's just about pop culture and the only time we were passionate was when we were talking about horror movies <laughs> and we were like hey why don't we actually talk about something we give a shit about and now we're not here. not who's the boss no. season seven episode two <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it's accurate it's, uh, yes that's exactly what i mean uh so <laughs> so brian brian tells us what he thinks is his essential horror and he, i kind of put him on the spot on it so you know it, i think it's a great answer though. he says i generally have two periods of time that to pick from pre-texas chainsaw massacre and post-texas chainsaw massacre <laughs> kind of like it. it's kind of like what i said about psycho in the former, I have the Universal mo- Monsters, the Toho Kaiju stuff, and nice. the really old horror like Doctor Cabinet, the Cabinet of Doctor Caligari, Vampire, and maybe Ujetsu. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, I've never heard of that. Is the Vampire with a Y? Vampire. Yeah, yeah, Vampire. Yeah, yeah. I never. Yeah, uh, he says they aren't serious and feature very little gore, but they have paved the way for the films that came after. Completely agree. In the post-Texas Chainsaw Massacre era, there's a lot that I like. First off, there was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was the it was that movie that was spoken of. It was that movie that was spoken of in a quiet reverence, and I admit that I watched it in broad daylight and was scared out of my mind. Mm-hmm. Then you have the that's because that movie seemed real. Yeah, sure. That was crazy. Imagine seventy four when it came out. No, it was nuts. Well, back in seventy four, it was like, well, you you can't write that this is true footage. And it can't be a lie. They wrote it <laughs> on a movie. Why would you say something that's not true? Right. Like, that's kind of how it was back then. Like, wait, they said it. <laughs> like, there was no internet to just discredit everybody. Uh, then you have the big three, Myers, Voorhees, and Kruger. When Johnny Depp dies in the first nightmare, I was absolutely shocked and awed. Then towards the end of the 80s, there was Alien and Predator. Some would claim they are sci-fi, but I put them in the horror category. I agree with that. Uh, because they show that alien life wasn't E.T. or Mac from Mac and Me. Mac and me. Two very interesting <laughs> choices there. Uh, do not – I don't think – if you told Steven Spielberg you put E.T. and Mac and me in the same category, he'd probably shoot you. He'd roll over in his grave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, then the 90s was a lost era for me. It was dominated by Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer style horror. He's right. Yep. This kind of self-relevant postmodern claptrap didn't do it for me. <laughs> I kind of got away from horror for a little bit, but high tension brought me back, and I fell in love with the French new extremity Fuck stuff. Yeah, I like th- I like this guy. I'm kind of with him on it. I mean, I was watching the horror movie in the '90s, but I was like, I remember go- I would be because we, well, we were in high school and or yeah, middle, middle school, school, high school, high school, and I remember I would be the guy that was there, and I was like. It was like a group of kids that you were with, and you'd be like, this fucking sucks. And everyone was like, that was fucking terrifying. Dude, uh, dude. And I was like, what the fuck's the matter with all Before of you? Before I, I said that, I saw that dude at the gym that I watched Frankenhooker with for the first time yeah. in years. And it was the same type of shit. Like, me and him were like true horror yeah. heads. And people would be like, I know, I still know what you did last summer. It was awesome. And we'd be like, let's just watch Hellraiser 2 for the 30th time <laughs> instead of watching this. Like, why are we watching this? It's true. And I, I think that any horror fan was like that. And, and because we were kids and you didn't have this access to Netflix or anything, it was kind of what you were stuck to. So you kind of avoided it. So I, I'm with you on that. That that was the same with me. And again, High Tension was another similar experience for me. I saw it in me. theaters. I drove so far to see Oh, that did you? Theaters. I tried so hard. I couldn't find anywhere. And when it finally came out on DVD, I think I bought it on eBay to get it early. Somebody had like early access. I mean, Paul. Paul saw it. We drove real far oh, to my see God. it. I gotta call it. We got to get Paul on the show. I was so pumped. I was so pumped about that. That movie was awesome. So he says he fell in love with the new extremity stuff. Uh, the new extremity stuff. Oh, my gosh. I'm all over the place. I fell in love with the new extremity stuff. Martyrs and Frontiers. Now I'm in love with the new stuff Ty West and Adam Wingward are doing. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. My man uh, crush on Adam is out of control. Yeah. To pick essentials is hard, but I think you have to go with Chainsaw, Myers, Voorhees, Kruger, Dawn of the Dead, Alien, Cannibal Holocaust. Yes. Yes. And then he wrote, or Necromantic. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. I don't know that one. You know. You I think you had it on your list. I've never seen Ooh. it. For the pure transgression, oh, and uh, Cannibal Holocaust or Necromantic for the pure transgression elements and irreversible for the new approach to horror. I like this guy. Fucking awesome, right? Did he say how many? Like, like I feel like we should set a limit 
Because I could list like 50. Yeah, I think, yeah, it would probably have to be a limit. And maybe, yeah, we'll have to see what we do. I guess it would be like, yeah, we'd have to figure it out. It would just be like, what's realistic for somebody to be like, here's a platter of movies. Take yeah, them. that's. I mean, that's take the them. approach you have to take. Yeah, yeah. Like, somebody who's never seen a yeah, single horror like movie. Like, here, you can watch these over the course of a month. A normal human being, not Paul. <laughs> be, done, be done by lunch. Here's 200 <laughs> movies. Watch it by the end of the month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's it for the show, guys. Uh, we appreciate all of you guys for sending those in. Thank you, Misty. Yeah, Thank cool. you, Brian. Thank you, Camp Counselor Frying Pan. Thank you, Joseph Magnuson. Thank you, Evil Dana. You guys are all awesome. We appreciate all your support. Horror Harbor. You're awesome. There's some other peeps that check out the sticker out. that we made. Oh yeah, we made a new Instagram. sticker. Hopefully, we'll get those made pretty soon. I just have to find some available funds. We'll get those made. We're going to be at the horror convention in Connecticut, July 18th. And once we get those stickers in, leave us a good review, and I will mail you one, no charge. And it's got to be good. Don't give me three stars and think I'm going to send you a sticker. Don't give me four stars and think I'm going to send you a sticker. What's the <laughs> point of four stars? Either you love it or you hate it. If you hate it, don't leave anything. Just don't ever listen to it again. I think I agree. Like I, I can see okay. a three star. Like no, 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 no. Well, no. You're like yeah, no. I wouldn't if somebody else put it on. Yeah, three stars. Like if somebody else put it on, I wouldn't be like, please turn this off immediately. Yeah, but then why even rate it? Like it's not like you wouldn't. A, it's not That's like a saying. private rating. <laughs> like a private rating, you're like yes, I will give them a four because their technical expertise <laughs> is not great. But like for the rating purposes of iTunes, like just. A five or out one. Yeah. Five or nothing. If you really hate them, like, just whatever. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. Uh, so anyway, yeah, if you guys give us five stars, we'll be dishing out those stickers soon. I'll let you guys know. We got to order them soon anyway because of the convention that we're supposed to hand them out at. <laughs> <laughs> that we don't, have, we don't have licenses to hand them out at. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, my friend has a table there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. He does a horror. The, the makeup? Ha- yeah. The makeup oh, guy. Yeah. So he's got a table. So I think I was going to leave some there and. Word, hopefully. But then just little shits will take whatever. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Harley Poe, for allowing us to use the song Gorehound off the off the album Pagan Holiday. Find them at harleypoe.com or Facebook.com slash Harley Poe. We're on Facebook, Facebook.com slash I hate horror, I think. I'm at I'm on Twitter at at at, at how many times am I gonna say it? <laughs> at I hate horror show. I'm at Jovi421. We're on Instagram. Yep. Boognish1985. And I think I'm at I Hate Horror yeah, Show yeah. still. Yeah. yeah. And that's a wrap. And oh, 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 oh. And if you guys are interested, we'll probably do a Periscope live uh, one of these nights if we can get you fools to watch. Because I just don't want to do it for strangers that are like, assholes. <laughs> Who are these nerds? Stop talking. Nerd. Turn this off. Turn this off. And you're like, just go to another channel. Why are you watching us? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, you jerk. Uh, have you used that Periscope app? Nah. Oh my gosh. Yet. It's so fucking strange. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. It's the best way you can help us and we really appreciate it, you guys. Just downloading it. It's been an awesome week. You guys have Really been helping us out with the downloads. They've been Thanks. crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh, and uh, I wanted to plug Promote Horror too. Uh, he's, I think, I think the Twitter handle is at Promote Horror. Awesome guy. He's got so much stuff going on, and he's got a fan fest in Miami that he's looking for sponsors for. So give him a plug because yeah. he helps us out a lot. All right, guys, that's it, and we'll see you in a while. <laughs> We yeah. won't see you, and it won't be a while. It's exactly two weeks, two, two and weeks uh, now, you'll listen and to you'll us. Hear us. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I do it every fucking time. Good night, guys. Thank you. Adios. Adios.